I'm currently working on installing a full car audio system into a truck. Now in trucks, it can be difficult to find the proper amount of space to add that base. In this video, I'm going to take you guys through the design process as I designed this enclosure for my underseat build. So to start the design process for any subwoofer enclosure, we're going to want to grab the good old pencil and paper and head on out to the vehicle and take our initial measurements. Now for the truck here, I have a full video that I made earlier in this build series that covers getting all of those dimensions and doing an early approximation that allows you to determine exactly how much air volume you have to work with. Doing that approximation will also allow you to pick out your subwoofers and make a good choice there. The number one mistake I see when making an underseat subwoofer enclosure is people pick subwoofers that are far too large and require way too much airspace. So make sure that you don't make that mistake. You guys can go back and check out that previous video. Once we have those dimensions, we're going to want to make something like this. This is my profile, the side view of the subwoofer enclosure, and I've cut it out of wood just to make sure and double check my fitment under the seat. I want to make sure that this enclosure can slide into position once we fully make it. Really quick though, before we move into doing the design, when we're planning out a car audio system, we of course need to pick things like our speakers and know what wiring is going to work with the vehicle. And for those things, I do recommend show sponsor Crutchfield. Check this out on the Crutchfield website. We can enter the year, we can enter the make, and we can enter the model of our vehicle. Crutchfield will ask us a couple of questions about the audio system that we can answer here. And once we've done that, we can see all the research that they've done for the vehicle, including what speaker locations they are and what speakers will fit and we can also see our options if we do want to replace the factory stereo as an example on the stereo if we click and see the installation gear that we're going to need we can see the extra gear that they'll sell us that includes the adapters and the different integration pieces that are needed to install this radio Next time you're planning out your car audio system, check out Crutchfield. If you guys want to take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, you can use that link here on screen or down in the video description. So let's dive in guys. Let's take a look at this design for the four JL Audio 10 TW1s down firing under the seat. I wanted to give you guys a look at the final design here first, because I think that sometimes that helps you better understand what I'm doing as we go through the design process. So overall here, if we look at the side profile, you can see that we essentially have a wedge shaped box and on the front edge here these are rounded to match the corners of the seat and then in the back side here there's a small little notch that's just to give us a little bit more clearance on the back side of the box so that this can extend a little bit further under the seat and gain a little bit extra air volume as I mentioned, the subwoofers are of course down firing, and this is just to load that wave off of the floor, a nice solid surface rather than having them up firing. Sometimes up firing makes sense, but for this application, down firing is the way to go. And your subwoofer consideration is also very important. On the 10 TW1s, this clearance that I've modeled in here, that's all the clearance that those need to be able to fire downwards. And they also include the grill on the front of those subwoofers within that clearance so I can make sure that I have all of that space accounted for when I'm actually doing my modeling. Something else worth noting is the back side of these particular subwoofers, it does not have a pull vent. In other words, there's no hole in the middle of the magnet which air needs to go in and out of. And this is advantageous because these are a true shallow mount subwoofer. We do not have to make sure that we have clearance for that air to be able to vent. If we wanted to, we could literally have a board right up against the back side of that subwoofer. So that's helpful when it comes to actually designing such a small enclosure. Now, if we remove these subwoofers really quick and we look at the bottom of the box, we can see that there's quite a bit of material removed for those cutouts of the subwoofer. And for that reason, since we're removing so much of that strength out of this bottom board, we wanna make sure that we keep everything good and solid and it's good to kind of link all of the sides together anyhow. So that's why we're using these window braces. I have full videos here on the channel about making those window braces. And of course, when we go further into this process and you guys get to watch me build this enclosure step-by-step, step, you'll get to see how those are made. 
Now, additionally, we have a cutout here, which is these surfaces. So that cutout allows some of that energy to transfer out the front of the enclosure. It will also be able to transfer out this large back end side here because this surface is actually elevated slightly off of the floor. And the reason that it's not going to tilt back on itself is there are some brackets for the seat that I'm going to bolt this surface to right here. So it will keep everything nice and level. And just keep in mind too, because this is a question that comes up, it's not like this surface is actually airtight sealed against the floor. It's up against carpet or the floor mat, which you know easily allows that transfer of energy. So it's not like we're trying to create some sort of odd bandpass enclosure or whatever where we have two sealed chambers or where this is a port. This is just going to sit against the floor. So the first step of the design process is I want to come up with my initial profile for the box. So in this case, I decided to model from the top down. So we're basically looking at a top view here and I modeled in my width my overall width that I wanted to use for the enclosure, in this case 54 inches, and then the total depth that I wanted to use. And again, these two values are based off of that little side profile piece I showed you guys earlier that allowed us to make sure that we have enough room under the seat. Now, another measurement straight from the vehicle was this five inch radius. That's the measurement of the corners of the seat so that we have a good match on the subwoofer enclosure here. Now the design of this here is based on the Mobile Solutions Quick Corners, that template. So I'll be able to copy that template shape. I've just got it drawn in here so that I end up with proper dimensions for this side piece and the front piece. So the first extrusion that I'm going to make here is of these pieces. So these are the first two layers and I've modeled this at an inch and a half thick. So I know that this is two layers of three quarter inch material. The next layer to model from there was the baffle. So I used that initial sketch again and this time I'm factoring in that same profile shape of those quick corners. But you can see that the baffle also sinks in to each side which will allow clearance for that front and each of the sides. Next, I model up the rest of the stack for these quick corners. And on these, I intentionally go far higher than what I actually need to be for the front of the box. And the reason for that is we're just going to come back and trim these with a slice later in this process. I can do the same for the front and the two sides and the back. I intentionally made this far taller than it needs to be because I'm going to come through with this cut feature right here and make that cutting pass. So now if we take a look here from the side of the box, you can see that it's starting to take shape of that profile that we need. It's worth noting here, we do need to obviously add a top to the enclosure and that top is going to be three quarters of an inch thick. So we need to make sure that we account for that in our clearance. So at this point in the process, I wanna make sure that I don't make the mistake of making this dimension be what I want my overall height dimension to be. It needs to be three quarters of an inch less. In other words, I want this back dimension to be five and a quarter inches. So right now I've actually cut this height to four and a half inches because we're going to be adding that additional three quarter inch piece. The next feature I added here is of course that top piece and you do need to keep in mind how this piece is going to be made. It's going to be extruded in this dimension. After all, it's a board of wood. So this is why I like actually modeling things on the computer because it gives me an idea what steps I'm actually going to have to do in real life. So I know in real life at some point I'm going to need to cut an angle on the back side of this top piece. I'll just end up doing that on the table saw as I'm cutting this rear piece. You can see I can also model in that cut so that's what that feature that I just added has done on that blue face there. It's removed that little piece of angle, made this nice and flush on the back side. Now, as of right now, this front piece here is blocking out that energy where the subwoofers are going to be. So I've added in a sketch there and extruded in order to make that cut. And next up here, we need to make our cutouts for the subwoofer holes. 
We'll open up this sketch here so we can take a look at what's defining those cutouts. This is another reason that it's very valuable to model everything for a subwoofer enclosure before we make it. As an example here, in this case, we do have quite a bit of room for these subwoofers, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it's a little bit tighter, but what we can do is we can model the cutout size for each of these subwoofers. So right here, this nine and one sixteenths inch measurement, but we can also model the outside clearance that is needed for these subwoofers. By having those circles sketched in here as well, we can make sure that we're not going to have any interference between the subwoofers or between the outside of the box. And yes, on these 10 TW1s, they can actually be even closer to each other if need be. But in this case, since I have the room, I'm going to space them out more intentionally just so that we have some more material between each of those cutouts to keep everything strong. Now you'll notice that I skewed the subwoofers further towards the front of the enclosure. And it's worth noting that I actually originally had these more centered, something like that. But what happened is once I got further in the design process and I modeled the subwoofer magnets, I noticed that the magnets were actually interfering with the top of the enclosure. So for that reason, I made this value here five inches to shift those subwoofer cutout holes further to the front of the enclosure, which if you look at the side profile here, you can see that that gives me much more clearance on the front. So now at this step in the process, I can do a volume calculation. Let me unsuppress this feature here. If you see that pink on the inside of the subwoofer enclosure, what that is for is our actual internal volume. I've hidden the rest of the enclosure away, but here you can see the big advantage of using a modeling program to actually do this sort of design. You can imagine that, you know, if this was a simple wedge, it wouldn't be hard at all to calculate that internal volume, but with having these complex cutouts in the corners, it would be a little bit more difficult to determine that volume offset. But now by using a 3D modeling program, I can have this more advanced shape and I can determine the exact internal air volume of that space. So I'm able to take that information for that internal air volume and I can use a separate program to model the actual performance of the subwoofer and make sure that it's going to meet my needs. So for this here, I had about 1.55 cubic feet of air volume, and that's of course before the displacements of the subwoofers and of the bracing. Our target on this enclosure was 1.4 cubic feet total, so that's 0.35 cubic feet sealed per subwoofer, and we were able to get just under that after those displacements of the subwoofer and bracing. So next up here, we wanna add our bracing on the inside of the enclosure, because as you can see right now, this baffle, you know, it'd be pretty strong because it's three quarter inch thick, but it doesn't really have a whole lot of support in the middle there. So we wanna add that brace, Let's get it added in there. I wish it was that easy. Obviously, I've drawn in a sketch here. I've taken the time to measure out each of those dimensions and actually design this. I wanna have this little rib on the center be lined up perfectly with the center of the brace. So I've designed all of that in. And the other advantage here is if you think about it, I can use the software to determine the exact volume of this brace. That way we can factor that volume into all of our displacements as we're doing all of our calculations. Now I wanna make sure that I have a brace between each of these subwoofers here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a pattern feature to add those additional two braces and everything is spaced out perfectly between each of the subwoofer cutout holes. Now next up, I want to actually model in the subwoofer because I wanna make sure that I'm not going to have any interferences with the top of the enclosure. So I use the specs directly from JL Audio and uh-oh, if we look here, Let's do a little bit of a cross-sectional area. Let's drag in here. Uh-oh, you guys see that right there? It looks like we're gonna have some interference with the subwoofer and the top of the enclosure. Or are we? So the thing about these subwoofers is they don't actually have a hard corner right here, like where I have it highlighted in blue. They actually have more of a rounded corner. So how could I come up with the dimension for that rounded corner to see if I'm actually going to have interference here? This is a really cool little design trick that you can do. What I've done is I've taken a screenshot from the JL Audio website of the 10TW1. 
I've dropped it into my drawing here and I've scaled the drawing using a known dimension. I know that the cutout size for this subwoofer is nine and a sixteenth of an inch. So I've modeled that in and then I've drawn a line that matches the side profile of the subwoofer here. And then I've drawn a line that matches the mounting depth of the subwoofer. By having those two dimensions, I was able to add in a rounded corner here, and then I just adjusted this dimension here until it matched. So you can see that right now, two inches, or let's say even two and a half, that's far too large of a radius. You can see part of the subwoofer still extends there. And let's say that we used a half inch, you can see, okay, that's way too small. So we actually needed to use one and a half inches. You can see that there's nothing sticking out over one and a half. So I go back into my subwoofer box model and I've added a fillet around that edge that is one and a half inch radius. So now if we check a cross section, we can see that we now have clearance between the subwoofer and the top of the enclosure. So this subwoofer location should work perfectly. And again, just as a reminder, I initially had those holes further back, but at this point in the process, I was like, hey, I gotta just shift them forward a little bit and I should be good to go. Additionally here, you can see where I've modeled the actual flange of the subwoofer just to make sure one that I have enough clearance around the subwoofer and to make sure that I could shift it as far forward this way without starting to encroach on this piece here. So now just for visual purposes, I don't really need to show them because if I checked something on this one subwoofer, the rest should be good, but I modeled in the rest of them there just so we can see the four subs. Now, as of right now, the top of the enclosure has a hard corner going around the outside, and I know that I want to soften that up a little bit. So now we can basically virtually simulate what it would be like to use that router bit. I'm going to add a round over bit, the fillet on the top edge there, and you can see, let's take a look at the side profile. You can see how it's rounded the back side of the enclosure nicely, and it's also rounded the top front of the enclosure nicely along with, of course, since we went all the way around the sides and the front area here. Now I have that piece transparent just so you guys could actually see through into the enclosure and see all that bracing and everything. But obviously once we make it in real life, it's going to be a solid piece of wood. It's going to look like that. And that part is going to be covered up with the seat anyhow. Now the final feature to add, remember that I wanted to give myself a little bit of clearance here on the back side, and this isn't a big deal because where I want to add this notch isn't taller than an inch and a half distance between what actually starts the inside of the box and the bottom of the box here. It's actually an inch and a quarter each way, a square. So I modeled in that part of the drawing as well, just to give myself that little bit of extra room. So we now have our initial foundation made for this subwoofer enclosure design. I used that model to make myself a little drawing here where I've added all of the dimensions for the overall enclosure, just so I can double check everything and make sure this is all going to fit within the vehicle. And then I of course have all my dimensions for my cut list and everything that I'm actually going to need to cut and the different spacings between everything so that I can space everything out. I've also given myself some notes here on how many layers of material I need for each of the different stacks in those stacked corners. And I've given myself a layout for the bottom of the subwoofer enclosure for all those cutout holes and what I need the spacing to be for each of those center points. Now keep in mind, even though we just breezed through all those steps really quick, I already had the design made and I was stepping through each of those steps. For me to actually create this design from scratch took quite a bit of time. I didn't time myself, but if I had to approximate, probably at least five hours. So there is a lot of time in here drawing everything up. And of course, when you design something for the first time, it's not going to always be perfect right from the get go. Like I mentioned, I had to make some adjustments in my subwoofer positioning. I did change up some of the radiuses and some of the different sizes on everything here. So kind of going through that design from start to finish and then coming back and making adjustments as needed, that all adds up and adds quite a bit of time. So what about the next steps here? So this is my design that I'm going to build from for the initial shape and structure of the subwoofer enclosure. But I do know that I want to add some more detail work. I want to add some 
beauty panel work on the side of the enclosure here to kind of give it more of the look like it fits within the vehicle to make it match the vehicle's interior. I also have this nice big open canvas on the front here, this nice big flat piece right here that we wanna add some dimension and some design work as well, again, with the goal being matching the internal DNA of the vehicle. So if you guys found this process interesting and you would like to see more of that next step, let me know. Don't forget, next time you are doing a car audio system and you need help determining exactly what gear will work best for your vehicle, check out show sponsor Crutchfield. You can take advantage of the special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Mo, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.